Welcome back. Full rate production of the F-35 is on indefinite hold tonight. The Defense Department says it's due to, quote, technical challenges and the impact of COVID-19. It's not the first time the $398 billion program has been delayed. Tony Capaccio's defense reporter at Bloomberg News. Tony, thanks very much for coming on. What's your, you. What do we know about what is causing these delays? COVID is obviously changing the timeline on everything all across the department and all across the federal government. How much of this is due to problems inside the program and how much of this is due to COVID? I think the COVID issue is the latest, but not the, the, the major impact here. This simulation project was supposed to be ready for operation three years ago, well before COVID. It's had a series of contractual and developmental controversies and difficulties because it's, it's been likened to me as the Manhattan Project of simulations. This is supposed to test the airplane in a 360 degree simulator against Soviet, Russian, Chinese, Syrian integrated air defenses, North Korean, Iranian air, integrated air defenses, things you can't do in open air testing. This is going to be the capstone exercise of this program before the Pentagon makes its crucial full rate production decision. That decision, by the way, and the, the original schedule was supposed to have happened in April of 2012. So here we are today. Right now, the program is in a holding pattern while the simulation verification and developmental issues are worked out and it has been complicated by COVID, but this is not one you can lay on that, hor that horrible pandemic. You write in uh, your most recent piece on this, you've been following this issue for years, obviously, but uh, mm -hmm. in your most recent piece, you write that Jessica Maxwell, spokesperson for Ellen Lord, uh, said uh, that a new date would be based on independent technical review. Who conducts that? Do we know who will conduct that and decide it's now okay to proceed? I think it's gonna be, they haven't given me a clear answer on that. The Joint Program Office of the F-35 tells me they're gonna be conducting it and they will have their recommendations by February 28th, we hope. That means two a month and a half into the Biden administration, they're gonna finally know what the, ne the, the next milestones are of this crucial, the world's biggest weapons program. And uh, it's leaving them a can of worms, shall we say. Do we know anything about what the technical challenges per se are? Some of the ones that you've told me about before have involved uh, the equipment that the pilots use inside the cockpit, there there have been a, a software problem that's been dogging this program for years. They've now changed out the software essentially in the last six months or so. Do we know what specifically these technical challenges are this time? Well, this the technical challenge dealing with this called so-called joint simulation environment are basically integrating all these different radar signals emanating from an SA, an S300 or an S400 integrated air defense system into this high-tech environment. They have to verify the modeling. They have to uh, integrate the modeling with the cockpit. And then it's going to be simulating flights with other aircraft, enemy aircraft, allied aircraft, Navy aircraft. It's a minuet, a, uh, it's a Manhattan project of simulation is probably a good way to put it. And like everything else with this $398 billion program, the difficulty was underestimated. Plus, there was a contractual issue with Lockheed on intellectual property for use in the simulations environment that was resolved last year. But that added to the delay also. Hopefully, this thing will be done by the uh, end of this, or by October, or November of this year, and a full reproduction decision can proceed. One of the things that you and I talked about the very first time we talked about this program, mm -hmm. I think it was 10 years ago now, was mm -hmm. the problem of concurrency. You just laid out some, some of the issues that you just laid out are core, they're essential to what the selling points of this program were from the very beginning, but you also report more than 600 of the potential 3,200 aircraft have already been delivered. That uh -huh. means we're already, what, a, a, a fifth or a quarter of the way into the timeline of, of the delivery timeline of this program. Does this mean that we need to go back to these 600 aircraft that are already out there and fix them in addition to the development ch uh, changes that happen moving forward. Yeah, right. So the new statistic I have is Lockheed is either delivered or is under contract to produce 970 of a potential 3,200 airplane program, including U.S. and international. So that's like a third of the program's already been committed. 
So to your question on retrofit, a number of the earlier models are going to have to be retrofitted for so to fix software defects and other issues that have been discovered in more recent testing. Some of the later model airplanes are coming off the line and they're in pretty good shape, but we're talking billions of dollars of costs to retrofit, they call them concurrency retrofit costs. DOD has done reports on this annually for the last five or six years, but we're talking billions of dollars to retrofit because of the concurrent nature of the program. Everybody went in with their eyes open, but their eyes were uh, blinded by the light of the F-35's promise, which has been less than stellar over the 20 years that Lockheed won the contract coming up in October of this year. All right, to that series of reports you write in this piece, Robert Beeler, the Defense Department's Operational Testing Director, says it is in his latest annual report set for release in January, roughly one month of combat testing is now expected to occur in mid to late 2021. You talked a moment ago about a couple of months into the Biden administration for one element of this. Sounds like another element of this isn't happening until late this year. Uh, not only, late this year, Beeler's report is going to be out in the next week or two. I was tipped off to that conclusion. Yeah, so we're talking later this year, after the 2022 budget has been chewed over by Congress, will we have a clear path forward for this massive program? I'll be looking for whether the Biden administration cuts the quantities planned in the current five-year defense plan. You, your viewers know what the fit of is. 79 plans were requested for 21, 84 are requested for 80 uh, for 22 and then it goes up to 94 in uh, 2023 and beyond i'll be looking for whether those quantities are cut in the and the budget likely coming out in march that'll be one telling indicator of the confidence the biden administration has in the program tony thanks very much as always great to have you back thank you for the opportunity